Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute since we've been out in the woods and we're getting ramped up to go on another adventure. Part of what that looks like for us though is checking our vehicle over to make sure that it's all where it should be. Now I know what you're thinking, it's a, it's a new vehicle, how bad can it be? It's probably all going to check out just fine, but the fastest way to ruin a trip for us is to have vehicle problems that we should have caught in our own driveway. So we're going to show you all the components of the Jeep. Uh, you may not own a Jeep, you may own a Toyota, you may own a uh, pick a vehicle already, it doesn't matter, but just make this checklist apply your vehicle and your equipment and you can't go wrong there. So our step one is, is pretty basic, right? We take a walk around the vehicle. We just really get a, a, a total holistic picture of the vehicle itself. We make sure the suspension isn't leaning one direction or the other. Tire pressures all look a little even. Suspension isn't sagging. Uh, we go through and we make sure that everything, like the tent and the rack and everything's aligned. It hasn't shifted with use. We just try to get a good big picture of the Jeep itself before we really dive into each individual piece and just make sure that from the outside perspective, we're sitting okay. All right, so the next thing, we're kind of zooming in on the, the vehicle now, getting closer, touching individual pieces, right? So the next thing we want to check is our lights. And we're at the front of the vehicle, but we're going to do this 360 degrees all the way around the vehicle. And it also counts for off-road lights. So we just want to make sure that they're all functioning, all our turn signals work, uh, all our headlights, and if we have fog lights or off-road lights, if they're working too. We're checking the housing and the, the lenses to make sure they're not cracked. Looking for condensation to see if uh, there's some water intrusion there, because if there's some water intrusion in there and you're running uh, halogen bulbs, there's a good chance that you might blow that bulb due to the water or you're just your lights are going to start malfunctioning anyway. If they're LED bulbs, you still want to look for the same stuff, but you're slightly more protected than just a, just a halogen bulb. Uh, but we're going to walk around the vehicle. We're going to check for uh, full lights function. We're going to check for the cracks and the condensation and, the, and clean lenses. And the Jeep's kind of a mess right now, but before we leave on the trip, we're going to make sure that we clean it up so we can see each individual piece. All right, so after the lights are checked, we're make sure that we're all good there. And if there's any discrepancies, feel free to note those so you can go back and fix those later. But we're going to continue with the checklist here. And, and uh, what we like to do next is just make sure that anything that's bolted on on the exterior of the vehicle, all the accessories we have, are nice and secure. And everything is exactly where you left it, right? So I like to check the cotter pin and my uh, winch hook and make sure that the fair lead's on there. Give the bumper a shake, make sure there's no rattles. Skid plates, the rubber gaskets on the end cap of our specific bumper. Uh, make sure our hood latches are shut. And then we just come to the back and we're going to shake the tent, make sure that everything is, is secure up there, no rattles and squeaks indicating that something might be wrong. We check our traction boards here, make sure those are on there secure. Give the rack a shake, make sure that's good to go. And just do that throughout the vehicle and anything you might have bolted on or added or changed recently, just give a double check. Feel free to check torque on, on some of the bolts if you've just uh, recently installed something. But uh, the exterior of the vehicle, all the accessories, make sure that everything is, is good to go. All right, so moving along with our inspection here, we're going to stop at each uh, individual tire. We're just going to give a visual inspection, make sure there's no bubbles, uh, the bead looks all right, the tread is uh, where we need it to be, and it's at highway pressure now, we know it's at highway pressure. And there's a couple different ways we could check it. We could check it digitally on our dashboard, or since we're down here inspecting the tire anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a tire pressure reading. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we're starting with our proper tire pressure is inflated. We're probably going to air down when we get to the trail, but this will at least let us know if there's a slow leak or something like that that we don't already know about that we haven't caught. All right, so once the tire pressure is uh, taken, we're satisfied with that. Um, if we weren't, we would obviously fill it up, but then we're going to go ahead and since we're down here anyways, just make sure that our lug nuts are torqued to the factory spec so we don't have any issues there. If you don't know your factory spec, it's going to be in your manual. You can go ahead and Google and a reputable source should be able to give you that. All right, then once you do all four tires and, and go ahead and look at your spare tire too, just to make sure that that's all squared away. But once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on. All right, so feel free to grab your favorite flashlight. This one's not my favorite, but it'll work. Uh, we're going to crawl under here and look at our undercarriage, and this gives us a chance to look for leaks, uh, possible puddles on the ground, or um, just general wear and tear of the things under here, and, and make sure that everything is, is kind of how we think it should be, right? Um, make sure that our skid plates are still attached, nothing's leaking out of the axle tubes, we don't have any oil leaks that we didn't already know about, or transfer case leaks, or anything like that. We just want to make sure that everything is where it should be, um, and from there... If there isn't any leaks, then I like to move to my drivetrain and look at my drive shafts, right? And feel free to, to grab a hold of these things and, and shake them around and make sure that nothing's loose, nothing's rattled. We want to make sure that our drive shafts aren't uh, dinged up, scored up, or 
just otherwise in, in, in disrepair. And uh, so we have a good understanding of what's going on. And if you've never done this, it's, it's also kind of good to understand what's going on underneath your vehicle. So when you're off-roading on the trail, you can kind of know where maybe the more sensitive parts of your vehicle are um, and kind of get a good understanding of the, the layout so you can place your vehicle on the proper line and not put a rock through your transfer case or, or pinch your, your drive line uh, between a couple rocks or a stump or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start checking some stuff. So everything looks really good under here and uh, I'm gonna give it a nice thorough look through but for the sake of the video I've kind of given you an example of the things that we're looking for and, and what I do to check these things and feel free to put a wrench on some of the stuff just to make sure that it's tight if anything jumps out at you and looks uh, maybe a little unusual. All right so we checked underneath and we're kind of moving forward on the vehicle here we're gonna check another critical set of components and that's all your steering components so uh, I'm gonna go through here I'm gonna grab a hold of things I'm gonna shake them and and kind of inspect uh, some, some rubber bushings and grease points and things like that as I go and just make sure that all the steering components are, are looking really good where they should be aligned and, and properly tightened down. While I'm in here, I'll check the drag link. I'll check my sway bar connections here. I'll, uh, I'll see what's coming down off the pitman arm here in the steering box to make sure that those rubber bushings are looking okay and that everything's sealed out of uh, for the dirt and and everything like that. And there's some grease points in here that I need to hit. I can always hit them with some grease as we go, but uh, everything's looking all right. I'm obviously gonna check both sides, but uh, so far we're looking like uh, we're passing with flying colors. All right, since we're down here anyway, we're gonna check our, our springs as our shocks, right? We're gonna, uh, on the shock, we're gonna look for any leaking of fluid. If, there's a, if it's a fluid filled shock, we're gonna look for discoloration of the shock tube itself, showing maybe that it's overheated. Uh, we'll give it a shake, make sure that it's in there nice and secure. Uh, and we'll look for the condition of the body of the shock to make sure that it's not cracked or bent and uh, all our bushings look like they're in good shape and we're torqued down properly, both top and bottom. Again, this is a four corner check. So just cause we're on the driver's side on the front here, doesn't mean we're stopping here. We're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna make sure our springs are properly seated. Our upper rubber isolator on the top here uh, is in good condition and also properly seated. We'll make sure that the springs aren't like one direction or the other or obviously malformed or something like that again. This is a relatively new Jeep, so we don't expect any issues, but uh, apply the, the suspension check to the, the vehicle that you currently have. If you have leaf springs, you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, your leaf springs aren't, aren't sagging too much, your shackles in a, in a good geometry uh, and things like that. All right, so we're gonna start inspecting under the hood here and make sure that everything is how we how we expect it. I know that I keep saying that, it's a reoccurring theme, but we wanna make sure that we're uh, leaving the house and hitting the trail with exactly what we think we are. Um, so the first thing I do is I just check for general condition. Yeah, it's a little dirty, but I wanna make sure that there's no uh, loose or frayed wires that are obvious. Everything is secured in place how it should be. Uh, there's no obvious leaks up here. Um, our oil cap is in place, our air box looks like it's in place. Nothing is, is uh, out of the ordinary. I like to just come through and uh, give my battery post a, a shake and a, a quick inspection to make sure they're not all corroded. Everything's secure in here. I don't expect any issue because the Jeep's been running great. Uh, but I just want to give it a quick once over while I'm in here. All right, so everything looks like it should be in place. Everything is uh, nice and secure. I went through and I kind of checked everything and just feel of hand here to make sure that everything is good. And it is. So the next thing we want to check is fluids, right? Uh, on our Jeep here, we got our windshield washer fluid. That could be topped off over here. Uh, up in this corner, we have our, the, the square one is our brake fluid. That looks uh, really good. And then we have our uh, coolant overflow tank. And then coming over here, we have our uh, power steering and it looks like it is topped off and in good shape. And then we have our, our oil dipstick. Now, the other thing to, to mention is that our oil filter is up here on the top and just make sure that the condition and I'm not saying pull it out, but make sure there's no leaks around the O-ring or anything like that. It hasn't deteriorated so much that you're spitting oil down here. Um, so we just go through and we just make sure that all our fluids are in really good shape and uh, we'll go from there. And 
and yeah, we're looking looking really good. Uh, feeling really good about this inspection, and uh, so far I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to, at least on the vehicle side of the house, make this trip. Uh, so some other things you may want to check. I don't have a dipstick for it uh, because we don't have a, a manual transmission, but you might want to check clutch fluid. Um, transmission fluid is another good one to check. Some differentials have a little uh, magnetic dipstick you can pull out. I would give your differential fluid a, a quick check while you're under there and just a general fluid check to make sure that uh, nothing needs topped off or nothing needs changing. Uh, before you go ahead and hit the trail and, and put the, the vehicle through a little bit harder paces than you normally would if you're a highway or, or city driver. The other thing you're going to want to do while you're under here is just make sure that your air filter is looking good and nice and clean before you head out on your trip. It's going to improve gas mileage, uh, power within the vehicle, and it's just going to be better for, and healthier for your engine anyway. Uh, ours is looking a little bit dirty. There's a lot of construction going on around our neighborhood. Uh, so ours is probably due for a change, and we're due for an oil change here soon anyway. So we're going to go put that on the list to make sure that happens. All right, so air filter has been checked, battery terminals have been checked, like we talked about a little previously. So the other, only other thing we want to look at under here is to make sure that our belts are in good condition. Ours is brand new, uh, so we don't have any cracking or uneven wear uh, or anything like that. There's no squeaking um, or squealing on the belt, so we know that our belt is good. And then we also want to check uh, our hoses and tubes to make sure they're not cracked, uh, they're not leaking at any of the joints here. I know some of the older. Uh, plastic tubes in the vehicles after they get hot and cool and hot and cool they get really brittle So you just want to make sure that uh, Everything is is in good shape good condition. You're not leaking anything uh, And these kind of these belts and these tubes could be anywhere on your vehicle So you just want to make sure uh, that you're checking all around like I have some some air conditioning stuff back here That's not a lesser concern, but uh, I just want to make sure that I I know where everything is and um, All my wires and all my tubes and all my belts are, are, in, are in good shape and and we are, we're good. So at this point, we kind of dive inside our vehicle and make sure that all of our cargo that we normally carry is secured, make sure the first aid kit is well stocked and in a place that everyone can reach it if there's an emergency. The only other thing, and it's kind of specific to us since we have kids, uh, you may not, so you can go ahead and skip this step. But if you do, I encourage you at this point to go through and check to make sure that your kids' car seats are nice and secure, installed properly, and are in good functioning condition. Um, your shoulder straps aren't twisted or anything like that. And, just keep them comfortable in the rocking back and forth and the off-camber uh, trail events that uh, isn't normal on a day-to-day on -day driving trip. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We're going to cap this thing off the same way that we started it with our, our quick vehicle walk around. Make sure that we pick up all our tools. There's no flashlights hanging around. I'll tell you a story coming out of a camping trip where I was packing up the vehicle. Uh, I left three really nice flashlights on my front bumper and I found out the hard way that they uh, weren't there when we got home. Uh, so I just want to go through. I want to make sure that uh, I pick up all my tools after myself. I'm getting a little old and forgetful. Case in point, I got my, my flashlight here on my front bumper, so I make sure I grab that. The hood is latched, and uh, just one quick check over to make sure there's nothing that comes to mind of something I wanted to check that I, that I didn't check already. Um, but I think we're, we're pretty good. Make sure that my, my quick fists are nice and secure on the other side of the rack here, and, and they all look good. And uh, We don't normally drive around with a shovel, and and axe attached so they're empty but um that's our that's our quick vehicle inspection and and i, I challenge you to kind of adopt it make it your own based on the vehicle that you're gonna you're gonna go on your adventures with and it's pretty easy to overlook this step and kind of dismiss it as oh i just did an oil change i looked at it everything's good but like i said in the beginning there's no faster way to end a end a trip uh before it even starts than having vehicle problems so these are things you can check and you can catch in your own driveway before you even hit the trail and it's going to make that, that trail ride or that camping trip, just that much more enjoyable, knowing that you've covered all your bases. Uh, and then you'll have some more confidence to go hit maybe that harder obstacle that you wouldn't have if you didn't know that your suspension was nice and tight. Hey guys, thanks for tagging along and I'll see you on the trail.